Welcome to the Church of Our Savior Lutheran. I'm Pastor Mark Herbst. Thank you for joining us today as we observe Ash Wednesday. Let us pray. Gracious God, out of your love and mercy, you breathe into dust the breath of life, creating us to serve you and our neighbors. Call forth our prayers and acts of kindness and strengthen us to face our mortality with confidence in the mercy of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound the trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so that they show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but but your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where the moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where the thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. My dear people of God, I have a pet peeve that drives me crazy, and it involves grammar. And one of the pet peeves I, has, I have deals with the order of pronouns. And for me to have a problem with this would seem kind of unusual since I struggle with the English language every day and I should be no grammar snob. But there's a phrase that really gets under my skin when someone says something like, me and my friends, me and my friends, I would hear that from my kids growing up and they would drive me crazy. Before they could finish the sentence, I would automatically correct them. 
me and my friends, my friends and I. You see, pronoun order really does matter. And for me, when I hear it, it bothers me. Because a matter of pronoun order tells you whether you're polite or not. Who comes first, you or someone else? It's a matter of humility. And it's more than just speech or writing when you put yourself first. It also, because it's improper with our grammar that we've been taught, which was ingrained in me as a kid, is it's a reflection of our intelligence. Some people will hear these phrases that are not proper and they may think you're not well educated. And if you don't put things in the proper order and you put yourself first, there may be a hint of narcissism, which I don't think anyone wants. I, my, me, it's all about yourself. And a simple phrase in conversation, you can get that. And I don't think anyone wants to do that. Me and my friends, no. It's your friends and I. It's the order where you place yourself in conversation, where you place yourself when you write. And I know it bothers me. Maybe I have too much time on my hands, but that is an issue. But also there's an inspirational quote that is so important to me. It has guided my life. And I think it's in the proper pronoun order. Famous running back, football player, Gail Sayers. His inspirational life motto, the Lord is first, my friends are second, and I am third. What a great way to look at one another. The pronoun order matters. God is always first. Humility, respect, and knowing your place. Now, many of you will probably understand by my tenacity with this issue that there was a song that came out about a decade ago, a little over, 2007 actually, the song was by country singer Josh Turner, and he was nominated for that song by the Academy of Country Music as the vocal event of the year. What was the name of that song? The pronoun order really got to me. It was me and God, me and God. Of course, that bothered me the first time I heard the song but I listened to the lyrics. And I understand and I appreciate the fact that English as a language, as any other language, evolves. It changes. The grammar that we were taught years ago may not be so strong and stringent today. And our language and our conversations and our way of communicating has become more informal. And I'm easing up on my issue with the pronouns. And when I hear that song, me and God, where I think it should be reversed to God and me because the order is appropriate where God is first. But Josh wrote this song, and if you listen to the lyrics, they're absolutely beautiful. And the words that are in that reflect the message that we have on Ash Wednesday as we enter into the season of Lent. And I read these lyrics and I hear these words and though I don't like the reversal of me and God, I appreciate it because Josh has saved the best for last. The song, the lyrics echo the words we hear from today's gospel message. It's about the intimacy between me and God, God and me. Regardless of the order, it's about the intimate relationship and the reliance that we have on our Lord. And as we move forward, regardless of what we place first in that order, me and my friends, my friends and I, me and God, God and me, it's the relationship that we strive to make strong. 
the words we hear from Matthew today about the intimacy, about building the relationship between our faithfulness in God and God's steadfast love for us. If the intimacy, the connection, regardless of who goes first, we are blessed. It is intimate, it's an intimate relationship, personal, informal, me and God, God and me. This Lenten journey, let's have that relationship and understand the strength that it has regardless of who we put first, but always understand that God is number one. Let us journey this Lenten season. Let's be intimate. Close your bedroom door and pray to the one. No matter who you mention first, God will always be first. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all our understanding, keep our hearts and minds in true faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, Freed to serve your neighbor, God bless you, that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Go. Your faith has made you well. Give praise to God. Amen.